Hello, hello, everybody. So I did something really exciting with my friend Olive over at A Book Olive. We, she approached me so kindly to do a book exchange with her. Um, we would send each other books and maybe some bookish things, and then we would read them and talk about them and vlog it. So the package has just arrived. I only started opening it, and then I remember that I had to be filming. So. We're gonna open it right now, finish opening it, and see what is in it. I am so excited, I have no idea. We shared, let me see. We shared our sort of wish list and the things that we already owned and things like that. So, I'm so excited to see what's in it. Okay, so this is the box. Ah, the books, oh my gosh, she wrapped them. So you, I love, look at how pretty the paper is. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, I see something about Pride and Prejudice. <gasps> the other man that says, sir. Oh my gosh, I have seen this around and I've wanted to read it for such a long time. So it's called The Other Bennett Sister and it says, inspired by one of the most beloved novels of all time comes the transformation story of Mary, the bookish ugly duckling in Pride and Prejudice. What if Mary Bennett's life took a different path from that laid out for her in Pride and Prejudice? What if the marginalized middle daughter of the Bennett family, the plain girl who takes refuge in books, found a fulfillment like the ones enjoyed by her prettier, more confident sisters? This is the plot of the other Bennett sister. And it continues, but I don't want to read any more because I just wanted to tell you guys what it was about, but I don't want to like spoil myself. It's by Janice Hadlow. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. I've already, I've read, one, I've tried to read one other book about um, Mary Bennett and I ended up DNFing it. I don't remember what it was called because what it did was it completely, this one talks about the transformation of Mary, which yes, I like obviously if that's, if you're kind of wanna, wanting to do a retelling and sort of reimagining of who she is as a character, but what it did, what that book did, was it created characters that were so, like, to their core, so unlike the ones that Jane Austen shares with us in Pride and Prejudice. And I read that book every single year. It is my favorite book. So I know, like, I, can, I have, I feel such a connection to that book and to the story and to the characters that I, I just immediately noticed that the, the author missed entirely who the like the core of who these characters are and so if what she if what the, and I honestly I don't even remember what it was called because I've just tried to purge it from my memory memory if what she tried to do was a complete like almost retelling or, or a, a whole a whole entire reimagining of Pride and Prejudice fine but it sold itself as what it did was actually it sold itself as the continuation of the story and then us seeing what happens to Mary because we don't really see that in Pride and Prejudice. And so it really wasn't in every imagination of Mary, it was a continuation of the story and we just see it from the perspective of Mary now that I'm thinking about it. And why I had such an issue with it is because it deviated so far from who our characters were. It had, it had uh, Lizzie turning into this vain, just bad sister who was so con like so much more concerned with the riches of Mr. Darcy and the life that marrying him brought um, that she ceased to be the Lizzie that we that we know and that and that is so carefully shared with us in Pride and Prejudice. So I was so upset. I DNF'd it. I think I read about sixty five percent of it, and then I was like, I'm done. So this is uh, I've I've seen better like much much better reviews of this, and I I think the premise is is different, and I'm so so excited to read it and see what I think about it. And so this is this is gonna be the second one. Let's see. Oh <gasps> yes! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I swear, she knows me so well. So I love, both Olive and I love Ashley Weaver. We love her 
um, her other um, series, which starts with a uh, murder at the Brightwell, and it's a historical cozy mystery series. And um, you know what? I sort of I, it is cozy, but I I think of it almost like so. I have these like tiers of like cozy, really cozy, very very low um, like low stakes. And then like still cozy but slightly less so where the typically their trade paperbacks the stories maybe a little bit more in depth and then I guess you get closer and closer to like sort of more traditional detective mysteries and I think that is a little bit above like the mass market um cozy mysteries where I thought the stories were were a little bit grander in scope and we got to to uh, I thought the, the writing was better and I think the character development is better um, and so that's kind of how I describe them and visualize them and, and think about them in 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 thinking about my mystery reading and so Ashley Weaver wrote that uh, a series it's like 19 like 1920s I think 1920s or 1930s in um, in England. It's like a high society type. Um, and then this is a new, this is the first in her new series, which is, it's a, pe a peculiar combination. And I honestly haven't even read the synopsis because I just saw that it was actually Weaver and a mystery and I knew that I wanted it. So it says, first rule, don't lose your concentration. Second rule, don't make mistakes. Third rule, don't get caught. I'm not reading like the further descriptions of each of these rules because I don't want to. I don't want to accidentally spoil myself for anything. Um, but it, it looks like Electra McDonald is our main character. I see Big Ben, so this must be set in England. Oh, okay. It's World War Two, so it's a World War Two historical uh, mystery. Filled with wry humor, tight suspense, and a delightful cast of characters. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this. I can't even tell you. There's a little kid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the card has a kitty cat. Cozy self-care winter box. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Olive. This is amazing. <laughs> and his dream. lip balm? It's lip balm! Lip balm to put on my keychain. Yes, okay. The winter is absolute, is an absolute nightmare on my skin and my lips. <laughs> so I am a Steelers fan and she lives in, in Pittsburgh and so she sent me Steel City uh, socks with um, the little, I forget what these are called, but they're found, you, you find them also on the Steelers logo and the, and their, um, and their, um, and their jerseys. Got some masks and some gel patches for the eye. Can't wait to try those out. Mango hand butter. And it smells like mango. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh, Mr. Rogers' pin. He is very important to the city of Pittsburgh. I don't remember if he's from Pittsburgh, but I believe they filmed in Pittsburgh and the city was very important to him and he to the city. He has a statue and everything. Um, oh, this beautiful Pride and Prejudice bookmark. Bright eye tea, caffeine free to same spice earthy savory, organic cinnamon or orga organic ginger, organic turmeric, organic sarsaparilla, organic black peppercorn, masala chai, mmm chai, black tea, organic cinnamon, cardamom, ginger. This necklace. Says bookworm. It's gold. I love it. Oh, nail file. Oh my gosh, I can keep this in my purse. I'm always losing nail files. Look how pretty it's glass. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. Thank you so, so much, Olive. I cannot wait. I'm gonna put this 
on this pin on my one of my lanyards for my library work. I'm gonna wear the socks when I read. I'm gonna put this in my purse because I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put this in the book. I can't wait. So I am going when I start to read these and use these, I will vlog it and we will share in the amazingness that is this box gift exchange together. So it is March and I finally have some time to dedicate to the books from the book exchange. So I will be starting with The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. And I'm very picky about my um, Pride and Prejudice retellings. There has only been one that has fully blown me away and that's Longborn by Joe Baker. It is a love that I share with um, Olive. So I am hoping that because we both love that book and sort of under and I think share the sort of similar sort of expectations um of what we're looking for in a Pride and Prejudice retelling that I'm gonna love this one just as much and I think uh Emma Tobias also read it recently um if you don't watch Emma Tobias you should total absolute fucking delight um and I, she, she, I think, recently read this and really, really loved it. So I'm very, very excited to get to it. And then right after that, I will be picking up um, the um, Ashley Weaver book, which is perfect because it will fit perfectly with uh, March Mystery Madness, as it is, I believe, a uh, historical, maybe World War II mystery? I can't remember, but... Yes, I'm gonna, it's a little late, so I'm probably gonna get to sleep now, but I will be starting this one tomorrow. I'm also going on vacation, so I will probably bring this along with, um, along with the second one. So, yeah. <laughs> pages into the other Bennett sister and I'm really really loving it um I think she has done such a great job of simultaneously capturing the like sort of essence of the world and the characters that Jane Austen created but enhancing upon them um in order to obviously <clears throat> create the story that she's trying to create I love um I love the way she presents Mary I think she's so complex and is so um, really understandable within her circumstances. Um, it's so sad to see, and you can you get obviously sort of snippets of this if you were to think 
beyond what is literally on the page of Jane Austen because she really doesn't pay very much attention. But if you were to, I'm sure, consider the dynamics of the family, you could come to the conclusion that Mary is sort of set aside and forgotten a lot. And and so a lot of the things that the author in the other Ben and Sister enhances upon all make sense if you just think about it. Um, so, But it's just really, really great to see that in detail and to see um it's great and it's like it's really sad it's sad to see how she yearns for attention and and even just some consideration um anything from just a, a good conversation that isn't that isn't led by by her being demeaned or set aside is really just like the the least that she wants and and it's so sad to see that her family just so doesn't see that um and even and even those who are who you could argue are, are well intentioned you know maybe like lizzie or jane um they don't they are still you know they're still young girls who are very still involved in their own sort of issues and little friendships and stuff and so even though they look down upon kitty and lydia for their relationship they have they have one as well it's not as annoying or as vapid perhaps but um it's still there and it still excludes mary and and so i'm really um i i I'm excited to see her sort of get the due that she deserves and I'm excited to see what else is done with her character. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really loving it. I um, just started yesterday, I'm seven pages in and I will continue to read it today. I go on vacation tomorrow and the next week, so hopefully like on the plane and the airport and stuff, I'll be able to read a lot. Um, I'm not sure how much <laughs> reading I'll be able to get actually on vacation, but we'll see. Um, because I am very invested in it, so hopefully I'll be able to dedicate some time to it. Hello, guys. So it is March. 12th and I just finished The Other Bennett Sister and absolutely loved it. I think that it's um, up there with Longbourn for the best, like, Pride and Prejudice sort of adaptation or expansion story that I've read. Um, I am behind on getting my books read for this exchange. I'm technically supposed to upload the vlog for this um, and the video for this tomorrow. I was on vacation and I brought both books and I was like, oh, I'll have, like, I'll be there for a full week. I'll have time to read. Of course I didn't, so um, I think the audiobook for a peculiar combination is not very long, so I'm going to try, try and read a little bit of it today and then finish it tomorrow. Um, I think I'm coming down with something which is really unfortunate because literally in the last two years, the only two times that I've gotten sick are the two times that I've gone to Florida to see my family, which is really upsetting. Um, but. Hopefully I feel better tomorrow. If not, I will have to not go to work because I don't want to go to work sick. Um, I'm hoping it's just like really, really bad allergies because I've just been sneezing a lot. And then I have a, um, and then my throat hurts, but it's like just sneezing and, and my throat hurts. And then just like the runny nose from the sneezing. So I'm hoping it's just really, really bad allergies, but we'll see how I feel tomorrow. Um, but yeah. I'm going to start this now, and, <clears throat> and hopefully I can get that video up tomorrow. done with a peculiar combination and I'm really really enjoying it um 
Ashley Weaver just really has this great way. Jesus, the like, the air is so dry. <laughs> My hair is like sticking. Um, she just really has such a great way of writing these these really interesting, intricate female characters and the dynamic that she writes between them and the male lead and their sort of like male companion is is always so funny and so witty and so interesting. Um, I'm so invested already. I'm, I'm I was pretty invested basically from the get-go in this story. Um, we have a very different type of character than her other series. Um, in her other series, she's a high society, very prim and proper woman. Um, and in this one, we have basically um, a, a thief. <laughs> so it's, it's quite different, but it is still really entertaining, really engaging. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I should be finishing it pretty quickly because it is a relatively short book overall. And it's a really quick read. And then I will get to editing and uploading this. I'm so happy that I participated in this. I'm so happy that... Olive reached out for me to do this alongside her. Um, I am just thrilled with the books that I that I read. Um, she really knows my my taste, um, and so I'm I'm just really happy that this turned out as well as it has been. You've landed me a solid blow more than once after all. Not in several years, but I haven't forgotten how. I said as we moved to the sofa. What are you doing walking around London at this time of night? That. It was a delight and you know what I was thinking there is in one of her I don't I don't think the most recent Amory Ames book but I think maybe the second to last um does delve a little bit into like spies if I remember correctly so I wonder if that was her like dipping her toe into this particular sort of um like theme um and and sort of character exploration but I continue to love Amory Ames, and you know, I'm not a fan of World War II historical fiction of any kind. For the most part, it like really depresses me, and I'm just not, I don't really gravitate toward it. But I think the lightness of the characters, and a lot of the the wit, and the, um, the just the, the connection between the characters really sort of lifts it a little bit, so that I don't feel that heaviness as much as I would in just like regular historical fiction um world war ii historical fiction so yeah if you enjoy historical mysteries i think you would really love just ashley weaver as a as an author um i think if you like the amory ames books you'll like these i think if you like the 1920s india books which i talked about in my um March Mystery Madness recommendations video that I recently updated. You'll like this as well. I can't wait to see what else she comes out with and what else we really just get to read um, about from her. Um, I am so, so happy that I participated. I'm so, so happy that Olive reached out. Thank you so much for thinking of me. This was so much fun. This was such a delight. Um, I had such a good time picking out things to send and opening them and, and getting to read new books that I really was already so excited about but who knows how long it would have taken me to get to them so I'm so glad that this provided me that opportunity to do that anytime you'd like to do another book exchange I am down please let me know um, please check out Olive's channel she's absolutely amazing I love um, how thorough her reviews are how um, just thought-provoking and thoughtful they are and how eloquent she is and how much really you just see the thought and the work and the dedication that she puts into her videos and and the work and her reviews and um, I was delighted to meet her a couple years ago I hope to be able to meet her again the next time that I go to Pittsburgh um, which should hopefully be later this year so I will let you know um, so yeah thank you so so much for thinking of me this was amazing this was so much fun um and i can't wait to watch your video so please i will link her ch um, channel and her video down below please check her out um and if you are here having seen her channel then welcome to my channel hello my name is roxanne and i hope this was um entertaining for you as entertaining for you as it was for me so thank you all for watching and for listening i love you all very much